Then make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Verse 14. Insert the poles into the rings on the side of the chest. That chest you are reading in NIV is not also a very good rendering. It's upon the Ark of the Covenant. Give us Exodus 27 verse 6 and 7. Exodus 27 verse 6 and 7. Make poles of acacia wood for the altar and overlay them with bronze verse 7 the poles are to be inserted into the rings so they will be on two sides of the altar when it is carried give us exodus 35 verse 15 and we will just look at the first sentence the altar of incense with its poles it's okay stand up for one second lift up your two hands and say father make me a mobile altar put it into prayers put it into prayers put it into prayers father make me make me Lord, a mobile hey, altar shatata. make me a mobile altar make me make me Mobile altar, mobile altar. Let me In Jesus' name, we are praying. Take your seat. God bless you. Amen. Already, you are blessed. I want to talk about becoming a mobile altar. The three scriptures we read here deals with the three different types of altars that you see in the Old Testament tabernacle. When you enter the gateway into the tabernacle, the first altar you see is called the altar, the brazen altar. That was the altar of slaughter. That is where animals, whether you're bringing chicken, whether you're bringing goats or ram, or you're bringing cow or bullock, that first altar is an abattoir. It's a place of slaughter. It's a place where animals are butchered and they are placed there as sacrifice unto Jehovah God. And if you have not brought that one, that's the first altar. You can't go to the second altar without passing the first altar. Brother, this Christianity and Judaism is the most bloodiest religion. Everything about your service to God, it needs blood. If I carry a knife now and begin to cut your body, I think it goes with you. <laughs> You'll be laughing. You'll be smiling. The thing will pain you. That is the first altar of your approaching to God. It's all about blood, slaughtering, sacrifice, butchering of animals. And it must pain you. You see animals screaming there. That is why the brazen altar is, is let's say it's like this, but it's, this is very, let, let me say the size of this carpet, even though it's bigger than this carpet. And on the four corners of that altar, there is a horn. There are horns on the four uh, corners, horns, mighty horns. The purpose of that horn is to tie the animal to the altar. When you are slaughtering him, he will be screaming, ah, ah, and you'll be struggling to get out. So you have to tie the sacrifice to the horns of the altar so he will not escape. Because the pain is so much. What those animals pass through and then the fire also will be roasting it and you'll be struggling. Even though already they have cut the neck, there is still life inside that animal and you'll be struggling to get out from the altar. That is how serious the first altar is. 
it takes it takes it takes uh, it takes grace to pass through the first altar the second altar is called the altar of incense and that first altar well let's go to the second altar it's called the altar of incense that one is kept in the holy place are we still there you know they have outer court, inner court, and the holy of holies. The outer court is the brazen altar. The inner court, the holy place, is the altar of incense, which you carry incense, frankincense, myrrh, and all of those things. That is the altar of prayers. That is the place the priest, the Levitical priests, they now stand before the curtain, before the altar of incense, and they bring chanting prayers if you see how they pray in the in the in the holy place nobody sits down when it's time for prayer all the priests they stand and you see them they'll be chanting like this they'll be chanting they'll be chanting they'll be chanting you you see them chanting before the altar of incense for hours hours and they have different shifts the first shift of priests come in when they are tired another shift take over and they're also another group who are chanting praises and worship so incense of prayer and worship is going on all the time while in the first area there is slaughtering of animal ah! Ah! and then these ones are chanting and chanting and these altars of sacrifice are coming before God before you enter the holy of holies and that one has another third altar which is the ark of the covenant and the mercy seat where only once a year the high priest enters with the blood of atonement for the whole nation and the blood of a cow for himself and his family and they drop it there on top of that altar of the ark, the mercy seat and it is there. Now, all these three altars I've taken time to show you from the scriptures. They have poles. You will see a metal rod passing through this altar like this on this side. You will see another metal rod passing like this. Whenever the cloud, the Shekinah, wants Israel to move on the journey to another location. As the cloud will start moving, the priests, they will quickly come and cover all of these altars. And they will... They will you see four priests bending with their shoulder under the poles and they start to carry whether it's the brazen altar or it's the altar of incense or it's the ark of the covenant they start to carry those altars because the Jews they are nomadic they travel in fact they travel and travel they, they don't have any place where they stay residential they are always on the move so the altar that they have all three altars are mobile altars as they move the altar moves with them and when they land they start to sacrifice afresh unto God in the new location shout hallelujah shout hallelujah again that is that is how the Israelis operate now, I want you to understand that today you are the temple of God you are the ark of the covenant you are the altar of incense you yourself you are a mobile altar you are to carry a life of sacrifice Amen. that's why romans chapter 12 verse 1 paul says i beseech you by the mercies of the lord that you present your body what 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 as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the lord it literally means that your life is an altar you as you are you are a mobile altar amen you are not just an ordinary human being you are a mobile altar amen everywhere you go your life must be a life of sacrifice amen what is an altar an altar is a system of authorization just like when you get to a traffic light there are two major lights green go ahead red stop there that is how every altar 
It's a system of authorization. As you have come here and drop all these seeds in the altar, I want to tell you there are, there are invisible beings here. And there are some sacrifices. Some of these monies, they have received it as a sacrifice. And they have given you a green light. And they have released something into your hand. And I don't know when, but sooner or later, that thing you came and did here, it shall manifest. But there are also some people who receive red light. Mm, you didn't know that one. Yeah, there are some people who receive. When you are living in immorality and you follow drop seed, sorry, yo, that one, it don't scatter. When you drop seed and the seed you drop is not a sacrifice, it's an offering. The spirit realm does not collect offerings. They collect sacrifices. And if it's not a sacrifice, the spirit realm cannot give you a green light. You just dash, you just dash church money. Thank you for dashing us money. What is an altar? An altar is a spiritual airport. Where angels ascend and descend. Spirits ascend and descend. If your eyes is open right now, you will see there is trafficking going on in this place. There is a trafficking going on right from the time you enter here. In fact, even from last night, even from yesterday, the traffic began because prayer city is not just a, this is not a monument. There is sacrifice going on here. Look at my pastors. They have been here. They have been on prayer. Am I right? They didn't tell me. They don't have to tell me. That is the, every time. If I, normally on Tuesday, they gather for fasting and prayer every Tuesday. I am not here. Most time, Ephraim is not here. There is a sacrifice people are paying. There are also prayer squads in prayer city who are always meeting. They have a prayer that meets. Is it 9 a.m., Mama? Huh? Nine hour. Then 12 then three. Am I right? I'm not talking about the... Uh, okay, now I want you to understand that there is, there is more than prayer city, as you see. What you know is Wednesday prayer. Am I right? No, the, if all you know is Wednesday prayer, you will not understand the mystery of altars. Any altar that there is no sacrifice is a monument. It's not an altar. Yeah, 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 yeah. You may go to a very beautiful, dignified church and look so beautiful. They have wonderful state of the art. The whole place is beautifully made. But an, a, an altar is not a beautiful place, it's a bloody place. It's an abattoir. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of groaning. It's a place where animals will be crying. Ah! Ah! That is how, if you come here on Tuesday, you will hear our pastors screaming and groaning because they are passing through pains. And there are prayer squads that keep on coming in and they are groaning and traveling. If that is not done, anything we do here on Wednesday is a ceremony. It's a ritual. And many churches are only ritualistic gatherings where people gather every Sunday. So it's a spiritual airport. That was how in Genesis chapter 28 verse 12 where Jacob landed at Bethel. The heavens opened because that was an altar. Bethel was the altar that was raised by his grandfather Abraham. And as he landed there, hey, there was an airport that took off. Angels started ascending and descending. When you go to John chapter 151, Jesus said to Nathaniel, that is how you will also see and your heaven shall be opened and you will see angels ascending and descending. Give us it, John 151, quickly, quickly, John 151. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Faster than this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, very, very, I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending. Where? That means it's not talking about an altar again. It's telling you, you are a son of man. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are now the altar. You are the one, you are an airport. Uh, we have Calabar Airport, we have Lagos Airport, we have Port Harcourt Airport. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Theodore Effiong Airport. We have Kingsley Airport, we have Ephraim Effiong Airport, we have Henshaw Airport. You also, you are an airport. But you know that there are some airports like Calabar Airport that only has one flight every day. It's one of the most backward airport in the whole of Nigeria, Calabar Airport. Sometimes two days, three days pass and you will not see airplane landing and taking off. And there are some airports like London Heathrow is the most busiest airport in the world. London Heathrow Airport, every 30 seconds an airplane lands and an airplane takes off. Every 30 seconds. And because of that they have five runways so they will not crash. And in those five runways you will see airport landing from different different places on different runways every 30 seconds 24 hours around the clock an airplane is landing and an airplane is taking off that is airport sister you are an airport but i don't know the kind of traffic i don't know whether you are a calabar airport or a hydro airport Makete le broze gedidi brozende elika brozende. You are a mobile altar, but there are some altars that are defunct, and there are some altars that are very active. An altar is a platform that connects humanity with divinity. Once you see an altar, there is a connection with the spirit realm. Every altar is connected to a god. Whether it's a demonic altar or it's the altar of Jehovah God. I pray that your altar be very active. 2024, may angels ascend, descend, ascend and descend. ascend. <laughs> what is an altar? An altar is a place you cut covenant and maintain covenant. How did you give your life to Jesus? They gave what? An altar call. If anyone wants to give their life to Jesus, come out. And you came out and you answered an altar call. That altar call, you cut covenant to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And right from that time, you have been transacting to maintain that covenant. That's why you have to always, Bible says, never neglect the assembling together of the brethren. Because you need to keep on renewing that covenant at the altar. It's a covenant you cut. What is an altar? An altar is where transactions between the spiritual realm and the physical realm occur. It's a place of transaction. In other words, it's a gateway. If, you, if your eyes are open, you are seeing me physically. But if your eyes are open, you will see there's a gate here to the spirit realm. And it is your transactions that connect you from the physical to the spiritual. <laughs> and there are many types of transactions one has to make. Altars are transactional. What does that mean? Altar is not just a place where you come on Sunday morning And they have number one, first Bible reading, second Bible reading, after that, first choir sing. 
uh, which one again? Sermonettes. Ten minutes. Somebody will give a ten minute sermonette. Second choir will sing. Then they call for offering. And your offering, you carry 50 naira and drop. Which is not accepted in the spirit realm because in the spirit, they don't collect offering. They only collect sacrifice. There are many people who come every Sunday to church. They have not transacted with the, with the altar and the spirits in the altar. And then the pastor will preach. And after they will share benediction and you go home, you have not transacted with the spirits in that altar. The whole of that week, you have one major day to renew covenants with your altar. You call that place your church. That is your altar. And yet, the place you call your altar, you fail to provoke the spirit realm. To invoke power of heaven to back you for the week. You just went on a ceremony to a location and came back without receiving help from on high. Look at, look at, look at, look at what, what happened to Elijah when he was facing the 850 prophets of Baal and the groves. They brought a bullock. 850 prophets bow and gross they brought a bullock and they sacrificed and they were cutting their flesh have you read that in the bible they were bringing their own human blood adding to the blood of a bullock and they were crying for their god to come down and bring fire because altars are transactional the spirit realm will never come to your help except there is a sacrifice on the altar what brings the spirit to your assistance is the sacrifice. So they brought a bullock plus human blood. It was a contest. And there comes Elijah. And Elijah said, bring my own bullock. He said, now, the greatest sacrifice I need in the nation now there has not been water or rain for three and a half years. So water is a scarce commodity. There's a drought. So bring me four barrels of water. Not, not, not cups, not buckets. You know what is a barrel? Huh? Four barrels of water when there is no water for three and a half years and pour it on the altar as my sacrifice and as they pour that water he said do it again and they brought another four barrels of water and they pour and Elijah said do it again and they brought another four barrels Hi! I can hear some people complaining. I said, this man is wasting this water. We don't even have water. Why is he? Why is he here? Because that is the highest sacrifice at that time. And then he prayed a prayer of only 64 words. Only 64 words. And fire came down from heaven. That is what we call altar versus altar. Brother. If your altar is not giving the sacrifice that can move the shakers, which is the spirit realm, coming to church is a waste of time. Coming to fellowship is a waste of time. Anytime you go to any gathering and you're not ready to sacrifice, please forget about coming to the worship place. So altars are transactional. When you come to any gathering, don't just come. If it's prayer, join with the prayer. If they say it's a day of fasting, fast. If they call for battle seed, give your battle seed. 
It's a sacrifice. They call for offering. Give your offering. It's a sacrifice. You know how Moab fought a battle with Israel. When you read that place, I think it is 2 Kings chapter 3, you will read first of all how Israel offered unto God, the Bible says, a grain offering. A grain offering is something without blood. They gave God a grain offering. That's who? Israel. Israel, you're going to fight battle with your enemy. And you're giving God. You are summoning God. You are calling God. With the cheapest form of sacrifice. God actually came down and he was giving them victory. They were winning the battle. And the king of Moab said, Hey, let me summon my own God. So he brought his only son, a firstborn. And he butchered him and sacrificed him unto the God of Moab. And in the spirit realm, judgment was given to the man who has the highest sacrifice. Because the spirit realm is an open market to he who pays the highest price. And so judgment was given in favor of the enemies of God. Brother, let me tell you, witches and wizards, no matter how you say, no witch can do me anything, they can do you. When your life is not a life of sacrifice, when you have not ascended in the realm of the spirit to the point that your Christianity is not affecting the spirit realm more than the one they are. Am I communicating here? What is an altar? An altar is a territorial certificate for you to operate in your region. Remember, you are an altar. You sitting there, you are an altar. Let me tell you, there is no witch, there is no wizard that can operate in the streets where I live. You cannot function there. Because I've become a territorial principality in Ikorinem. That Ikorinem, yeah, 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 yeah. the dimension of the sacrificial life I am living is higher than any witch and any wizard in the whole of that region. So all their powers and altars have been dismantled. They have been paralyzed and crippled. They cannot function. You see this prayer city altar? This prayer city altar is so strong and so powerful that all the marine powers in this marina, they have gone on leave and transfer. Many years ago, when I first came to this compound, there's no ship and no engine boat that can pass this water. The moment you come to this place, the engine will off automatically. Until you will come and pay homage to my father. Because this was the altar of Obuni in those days. And if you don't pay homage to my father, there's nobody that will fix that engine. They call that spirit in the water Nsukumonku. I came here when my father had died and I met that spirit. I met that thing where every, every engine boat, once they reach here, the thing would and it would off. So what I simply did is I used to come here every midnight and sit down here and take authority over Nsukumonko and bring him down. I was 20, 21 years of age. You don't need gray hairs before you bring every power under your feet. What you need is a vibrant, volatile altar. May you carry fire. May your life be a life of fire. Everywhere you go, fire. Everywhere, fire. Everywhere, fire. Yes. Everywhere, fire. Yes. Everywhere, fire. Yes. Everywhere, fire. Yes. Everywhere, fire. Fire. Da, da, da. God 
God expects you to be a territorial principality. When we see men of God, you say, ah, oh, this, we are introducing this man of God as a general. This is God's general. Brother, most of those things are nonsense. A general is known in the realm of the spirit by his potency and vibrancy. A general is a general because of his rank in the spirit realm. He has so disturbed the spirit realm that they say, Paul, I know. Tio, I also know. Dada! It's a rank. Yes! It's a rank that anywhere you go, the spirit realm, they know you. Why? Because there is no place you go to. You carry your altar with you. And you are a problem every place you enter. Maurice Sorello was going for a meeting in Kampala, Uganda. And they picked him up on the screen, the radar screen in the witchcraft occultic world. And they had to send a message to the highest ranking wizard who was controlling the whole of East Africa. And they said to him, move out from Kampala now and carry all the 7,000 agents, witches and wizards who are all under you get them all out of that city and make sure you are outside of Kampala by 70 miles radius and he asked why he said because there's a man of God that is about to enter that town his name is Maurice Sorello that is different from other men of God the potency of his prayer altar is so vibrant and strong that if you remain there, number one, there are about three things that will happen to you. Number one is that you will be killed. Or if you escape death, you will be maimed. You will either be crippled or you have stroke. Or you will be arrested and converted to the Christian faith. Those are the three things that will happen to you. So get out. And all your 7,000 agents working with you, get out. That is what we call territorial priesthood. It's a life you live in the secret and everywhere you go, anywhere you're entering, there is a lamb bell going off in the kingdom of darkness. Wawa, 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 wawa. One is running helter skelter. Why? Because a mobile altar is landing. Can you be a born again and you're running? Daddy, pray for me. Which is in my compound? Which is in my in my in my compound? You are a yeah, yeah Christian. You are a Christian whose altar is defunct. You are a Christian that your altar is not active, is not vibrant, is not speaking. I ignite every altar under my voice. Amen. Receive a fresh fire. Amen. What is an altar? An altar is a generational structure. The altar that Abraham raised at Bethel. Abraham is now dead and buried. But his grandson, Jacob, came to the same place. And the moment he landed there, the heavens opened. And the same spirit entity said, I am the God of your father, Abraham, Isaac.
When Noah came out from the ark after the flood and entered the new world, the first thing he ever did was to raise an altar. And as he raised that altar unto the Lord and sacrificed a very costly sacrifice because only two animals can enter the ark and then seven of the clean animals and he carried one of every clean animal which is an endangered species when you have only seven animals in the whole world and out of the seven you carry one and you sacrifice of every of every animal that's a, that is a very high sacrifice that's not offering that's sacrifice and heaven came down and the Bible said, and God smelt a sweet smelling savor. Ay, 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 ay. You see, most of the thing people drop on the altar is not a sweet smelling savor. Most of the thing people drop on the altar in the name of offering is a stinking odor. It's an insult to the nostrils of God. Because out of your march, you carry one cranky note just to fulfill all righteousness. But this one was a sweet smelling odor. And God said, I have repented. I will no more judge the earth with a flood. And he said in chapter 9, verse 1, he said, and as for you, Noah, and your sons, I bless. Give us it, Genesis 9, 1. When I mention scripture, just put it quick on the screen. So he blessed them and blessed his sons. Have they got it? Genesis 9 1. And God blessed who? And who again? Who raised the altar? Who sacrificed? Who was blessed? Because altars are generational. Any man that has a very powerful altar, his children and children's children's children can never escape. Give me Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. Yes, give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9. My God. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is, he is God, the faithful God, who does what? <laughs> now, wait there, wait there. Who does what? <laughs> Keep it covenant. Covenant is the mystery of the altar. You do not cut covenant outside of an altar. When the Bible said he's a God who keeps covenant, he's telling you <laughs> where there is a altar there is and he said and such people he said I will keep mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to what a thousand generations ay, 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 ay. may your altar speak for you may your altar be very vibrant Amen. may your children's 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 children all come under the covenant of your altar in the name of the father Amen. in the name of the son amen. in the name of the holy ghost amen. shout amen like a thunder that's to tell you that most of the battles even that you are fighting is not witches and wizards. It is an altar. It is the altars of the generations of your fathers and your mothers. Demons have legal ground to fight you through the altars that your father had or your mother had. They have legal ground to fight you. And most of the poverty, frustration, hardship, and all the backwardness you are battling with, it is an altar. It is an altar. Kayadu sekede. Altars, they don't die. Your father died, your grandfather died, but the altar never died. And the covenant he cuts is still alive. 
is still speaking. Sila. Father, I stand on this altar, connect to the Lamb's altar in the heavens. Every man, every woman who is fighting a battle that is bigger than them from the altars of their grandfathers. Let the altar of Calvary swallow. Amen. Amen. And nullify those covenants. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. In the name of the Son. Amen. In the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Shout amen three times like a thunder. Amen. 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 Da da da. Even if I stop now, I have delivered. If you understand these things, and I pray you will understand, and I pray you go beyond understanding them. I pray the thing enter you so you understand that it's, you're not just a Christian you are a mobile altar and the first priority in your life must be the altar look at it Noah he was the first person who raised an altar to God in the Bible. He was Noah. And he did it the moment he came out from the ark. What is he entering? A new world. And entering a new world, the first thing he did before building a house, before calling his wife, that please, as we are coming out, prepare food, the first thing he did was to raise an altar. Abraham, the first thing he did on entering the earth of the Chaldeans, I mean, leaving the earth of the Chaldeans, entering the land of Canaan, and God said, this is the land I've given to you. He raised an altar. Thereafter, he pitched his tents. So altar is more important than your house. The Jews, or let's go to Elijah. Elijah, the first thing that Elijah did after the 850 prophets of Baal and the grove have sacrificed their bullock and failed he rebuilt the broken altar he gathered the 12 stones of the 12 tribes and then brought the sacrifice and prayed a prayer because altar is the first thing of warfare is the first thing brother May you never travel and enter a new territory without the first thing you do, you raise an altar. You move from Calabar to Uyo and you just enter like that. And without further ado, you are looking for crunchies to go and eat food. You are eating in a new city without altar. It's like you don't understand the spirit realm. You don't understand the dimensions of this life. You don't understand that you're crossing boundaries where others... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. May you not enter a hotel. And the moment you enter a hotel, the first thing you're doing is opening your bag, removing your clothes and hanging your clothes. Stop that! The moment you enter any hotel, close the door. Drop one drop of oil. Father, we raise an altar to you. We invoke your presence. We call you into this house. Every other altar in this location, we swallow them. We silence them. We silence their speaking. We silence. When the Jews came back from Babylon to Jerusalem, the first thing they did was to raise the altar. They have not even built houses. But they gathered at Jerusalem and raised the altar first. Those of you, your children have gone for school in different cities. I hope you told them that as you land where you are going, the first thing you do, raise an altar to God.
Oh, as a parent, you didn't tell. I know you won't tell because you yourself, you don't know. You yourself, when you go, you just they go. And as you land, you they walk and move. You struggle without heaven's backing. You struggle without heaven's support. You don't understand the mystery of altar. You think this life is all about struggle. Life is more spiritual than physical. And the spirit realm is contacted by altars. If you don't function by the mystery of altars, brother, of course, you are here only in the physical. Every demon knows that you are a non-entity. Every powers of darkness, they know you are an empty container. Because you don't have strength. It is the spirit realm that will give you the energy you need to succeed and to excel. Learn every time, every place to be moving by the mystery of altars and to be a mobile altar. Say amen. amen. Give me Exodus 20, 24. Exodus 20, 24. I think I should, I should close now and continue next week. What about the people who never came today? So let me cut it and keep for them. Uh, so what happened to them now? Bible said, be your brother keeper. Uh, is a reverend continue, don't mind them. <laughs> Okay, let's go to Exodus 20, 24. An altar of earth shall you make unto me and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thy oxen in all places where I record my name and I will come unto thee and I will bless thee. It is the altar that summons God. It is your altar that invokes the spirit realm. If you do not operate by the mystery of altars, God is very far from you. You are on your own. Because you never raise, he said, in every place you go, raise an altar. And then I will come and appear to you. But you they go, you know, raise altar. And you leave that one, go another place, no altar. You go again, another place, no altar. You're on your own. Spirits cannot take over your life and enter your jurisdiction except by invitation. The invitation that brings spirits is what we call sacrifice. It is the sacrifice that brings the spirits down. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I sang that song. My altar is calling you. Oh Lord. Give me Genesis 13 verse 18. Genesis 13 verse 18. Glory be to God. <laughs> then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of where? Everybody say Mamre, which is Hebron. And what did he do? Note two things. He has left Bethel. He has moved to a new place called Mamre. And the first thing he did on landing in Mamre is to raise an altar. Do you know that this thing is not, is not um, religious foolishness, but it is spiritual reality. Anytime you come back to your house, as you enter your room, you're supposed to renew your altar. Before you start removing shirt, removing clothes, 
the first thing you should do there, Father, as I've entered here, I renew my altar. I call your presence back here. But you don't do that. When you land, you run straight to the kitchen. <laughs> you run to the fridge and carry coal, coal Fanta. Go, 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 go. You don't even pray for the food. I say, Father, bless the food. When the food has entered three quarters, you now say, Oh, Father, please forgive me. Bless this food. But the other don't play piano. Yeah, me, I know they flow with piano. But at the end, when I'm coming to conclude, that's when you can play the piano. Yeah. That's how me, I function. Hallelujah. Abraham removed his tent, came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is Hebron, and built there an altar. What is the place? Mamre. Go to chapter 18, verse 1. Go to chapter 18, verse 1. <laughs> and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. God doesn't just appear to men anyhow. There is a procedure and protocol for God to appear to you. He will always appear in the place of your altar. And it is your altar that summons God. It is your altar that invokes God and invokes the spirit realm. If you have never had encounters, it's because you don't have altars. And your altars, how vibrant is your altar and the dimension of sacrifice in your altar determines the angels that will be ascending and descending. That is how one person in the night can have more than nine encounters. Another person sleep and in nine months he never has one encounter. This was the trinity that came. It was three men who later said they are three angels who later they are they revealed to be the Lord. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost came down. Piam. Because a man has an altar. I pray that before this year, God will appear to you. Give me 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 4 and verse 5. 1 Kings chapter 3. Is it there? Good. And the king went to Gibeon. Went to where? Gibeon. To do what? To sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Verse 5 In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. God will not appear to you as a mobile altar in Uyo. Number one, you have never sacrificed anything in Uyo. Except you as a mobile altar, your life is a life of constant sacrifice. Then anywhere you go, the heaven is open. When your life is a life of sacrifice, heaven can appear to you any place. You are not bound by locality. I'm speaking deep things here. How many of you want God to appear to you? <laughs> Look at the cost. 1,000 burnt offering sacrifice. 
Excuse me. Do you know that Balaam was hired by Balak, the king of Moab, to do what? Curse Israel. And he said, it's okay, let's go. And he took him to a mountain, to a particular place. And Balak, I mean Balaam said to Balak, raise me here seven altars. Bring me seven bullocks and seven rams so I can sacrifice to summon God. Who are we talking about? A false prophet. When a false prophet follows the right protocol and procedure, he will get the correct results. You who are the correct, correct prophet, correct guy, who doesn't want to go God's method, you will never see God. That is how there are many false prophets all over the land, but they are getting answers because they are paying the price. You is a correct man. You don't want to sacrifice. Then heaven will remain close to you because God will not come except there's an altar. And an altar is a monument without sacrifice. Selah. <laughs> and God came down and appeared to Balaam and gave him the message while Balak and the princes of Moab were standing by the altar and he came back and delivered the message and the message was not favorable he said let's move to another higher place and they built another seven altars another seven bullocks another seven rams and God could not remain in his throne because a man has paid the price to pull him out from his throne Left for God, he for no come because he know you are a false prophet. But because you have done the correct thing, I have no option. Even though I'm God, I'm, I am bound by my own laws. So God came down again <laughs> to attend to a false prophet. And he still was not favorable. He said, let's go to another location. And he brought another seven bullocks, seven altars, seven rams. And God came again. God have to come because the correct procedure has been followed. Listen, if you go one year, you don't hear from God. Brother, your Christianity is a nonsense. All you are doing is ceremony. Check your life. Check all what you do from January to December. I'm communicating. This is a new year. What sacrifice have you brought for the new year? I hope you know that throughout the Old Testament, the whole of the Old Testament, no, no nation goes to war except first of all offering sacrifices to his gods to invoke the power of spirit entities to fight. Goliath cursed David by his gods. What is that? Altar. And David also cursed Goliath by his God. What is that? Altar versus altar. Raise the sacrifice for this year. Or are you just entering the year like that? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You see, this is Prayer City Altar. Let, let me leave Prayer City Altar. Let's go to your altar in your church. What makes an altar powerful and volatile? are two things. Number one is the man of God that is set over that altar and the life of sacrifice he is living. 
If your pastor is a pastor who eats seven days every week, sleeps all night to the morning hours, and when it's time for church, he carry his Bible. Uh -huh, this is what I will preach today. <laughs> then no matter how the members pray and fast, that altar will lack power and potency. There's a life a man can live no matter what the members are doing. Once he land, the atmosphere change. He's a commander. He moves with the administration of heaven. Anywhere he enters, heaven stands at attention. His word is a law in the spirit. Makai labusha kataya. That is why there are some of us we don't need to carry prayer squad to different churches. Once we land, we are an authority in ourselves. You will never see Umar by carrying prayer team. He doesn't need prayer team. He's a one-man prayer force. There's a level you get into ministry that prayer squad is even a problem to you. They create more complications. Number two. I so said the first thing that makes an altar powerful and volatile is the man of God. The second thing that makes an altar very powerful and volatile is the members. The people who come to that altar. If the people who come, they are highly consecrated. They are men and women of prayer. They live fasted lives. They are sacrificial in giving. Brother, even if the man of God is not very connected because of the members, the heavens will open. But when the man of God and the members are connected, there is angels ascending constants. That is why prayer city, if you don't understand, number one, Papa Ephraim is there. Highly consecrated. Papa Tio is there. Consecrated small. All these men of God are here. Highly consecrated. Prayer squad are on. Highly consecrated. Even the members who come to this prayer city, fire for fire. Hey! It's not a joking matter. If you do not understand this place in the realm of the spirit, you will not understand that this is the number one ministry that has given Satan headache in Cross River State more than any other ministry. This ministry. This ministry. Ayala busha kedi eli busha brandaya. Hmm. Now, I want you to understand that there is a difference between a sacrifice and an offering. Judge yourself, oh, because the spirit realm does not collect offerings. It's the church that collects offerings. The spirit only collects sacrifice. You know the difference between a sacrifice and an offering? Uh, we
we have one of our women here. Sometimes I used to drop her when I'm going home. And her name is um, Sister Tanaga. She lives in the same streets as I'm going to Ikorinim. I just pass. I can drop her. That's not a sacrifice. That's an offering because I don't go out of my way. But there are times, where is Kingsley? Yeah, there are times I, used, I, have, I have dropped Kingsley from Prayer City in his house. Do you know where Kingsley lives? Kingsley lives on the other side of Nigeria. You reach Cameroon border. Then you enter speed boats and you fly. What do you call that place? Bakoko. Huh? Skanobo along Nasarawa. Skanobo, Bakoko, Nasarawa. Hey! Oh, wow. Bro, for me to drop Kingsley, I will pass my house junction. Go about three, four miles. Enter Bakoko. Enter Skanobo. Enter Bololo. Enter Jajojo. That is what we call sacrifice. That's sacrifice. Sacrifice is what pains you. Sacrifice when you are giving something that is in your comfort zone. That's offering. When they say offering time, blessing time. Hey, 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 hey my God is good. Oh, everything now double, double. 50 naira, 20 naira. That's offering. Do you know that as, as it is with my own offering, I'm just giving as an example. Whose phone they make? Bring it as offering now. I made a commitment several years ago, my offering, no matter even if they call three times, four times, five times, that was some years ago, it cannot be less than 3,000. That's some years ago, not even now. This time I've gone far beyond the 3,000 as offering. Even if you call for five offering, Tio is giving, my offering is heavy. That's why I don't believe also in when they say, everybody bring your highest note. What is highest note? That's nonsense. Because I can never give God less than, let me say, 5,000 at any given time. Never. Even when you say bring your highest note, I will bring nothing less than 5,000. That's my highest note. But I don't know why we Christians, our highest note, you will remove only one and march as a big man. Meanwhile, you have another 20 notes there. That's not a sacrifice, that's an offering. Listen, if you don't get this thing right, you'll be coming to church for 20 years, you remain where you are. Because you are not putting your angels to operation. Oh my God. 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 What Abel gave to God? Was sacrifice. What Cain gave was offering. What did he give God? Mongmoyekong. That's what Cain gave. He gave God Mongmoyekong. It was an offering. I said, Father, I have given you. And the Bible says, and God frowned at it. Do you know that there are many offerings you give, heaven frowns. Heaven rejects it. Don't think that everything you are giving on Sunday or whichever place, that heaven has taken it. Heaven never take it. Only church take it. But heaven doesn't take offerings. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh, oh, oh. If you look at the life of Noah when he came down from the ark, what did he give? Sacrifice. Not offering. Endangered species is what he removed and gave to God. And God smelled a sweet smelling savor and said, I bless you and your sons. From now henceforth, I will never destroy the earth again like this. I have removed. I have changed. I, Jehovah, I have repented. Do you know that the life of your king, Jesus, he was a mobile altar. Jesus. This Jesus. Have you studied and find out how many times Jesus spent all night prayer? Go and read the four gospels and take time. And you discover that Jesus, this thing we call all night prayer, was constant in his life. Apart from that, very early before it is day, Jesus is somewhere praying. And apart from that, his prayer is not ordinary prayer. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. The Bible says he prayed with groaning and with tears and with strong crying. That's the life of Jesus. You know, the prayer of Jesus was so serious that blood was coming out from his, from his pores. That's the life of your king. Do you know that apart from that, Jesus lived a fasted life? Apart from the 40 days, he lived a fasted life. When the people brought the young man, uh, when they came down from the mountain, who was epileptic, and the disciples said, we have tried. We can't cast him out. Papa, what is the reason? He said, this one does not go out, but by what? What does that mean? It means that he who cast out the demon was on fasting and prayer. When you see Jesus at the woman of Samaria at the well, and the disciple went to eat food, and when they came back and they brought food for him, he said, I have already eaten. They said, who gave him food? He said, my food is to do the work of him who sent me. Meaning he lives a fasted life. While disciples are eating everywhere, Jesus is on fasting. There's a life you live, brother, let me tell you, if you eat seven days a week, forget about it. You're not a mobile altar, you're an empty container. If you cannot learn to live a life of fasting, you live that way. If you cannot learn to live a life of prayers, you live that way. If you cannot learn to be waking up in the midnight hours and praying one or two hours every night, you live that way. You are not a mobile altar. You are just a born again Christian which witches and wizards are urinating on your head every day. Added to that, there must be financial sacrifice. That's how you become a mobile altar. You live a life of sacrifice. Everything about your life is paining you. Is paining you. You live that way. I want to challenge everybody here. Please, as you enter 2024, can you upgrade from giving God offering? To giving him sacrifice. Upgrade. Don't follow the crowd though. If you follow the crowd. Huh, you will be like them. If you want to come out from the crowd. And stand out. Brother. Let your ways of servicing your altars. Be different from others. Shout amen like a thunder. Amen. Are we still there? Do you know that the truth of the matter is that most of the time when you see people engaging in prayer, they are praying, 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 praying. It's good, oh, very good. But do you know that most of the prayer you pray can be settled with a sacrifice? Most of the prayer, this prayer you are praying, you are praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. It's good, oh. But all that one you are vibrating, <laughs> one sacrifice can cut five hours of vibration short. But you don't want to sacrifice. Because you discover that the thing that touched your pocket is more than the one that touched your body. <laughs> That's why so many people who are praying machines are frustrated machines. 
โดยเปรียนเปรียนเปรียนเปรียนเปรียนเปรียนเปรียนพระเจ้า please forgive me you but I have to tell you there are many prayer you people pray I will never join you I will sit down while you are vibrating I'll be sitting here watching you like this saying oh God help them <laughs> Father please help them that's my prayer because I cannot be praying every day breaking of yoke breaking of bondage breaking of this break. Bishop or Yedipu cannot be praying for yoke to be broken Paul and Nechi cannot pray for yoke to be broken why your own every Wednesday you break I break I break It's like you should be taken to psychiatric hospital. <laughs> Forgive me, oh. Give me Psalm 50, verse 4 and verse. Am I communicating here? Yes, sir. I'm telling you things. If you learn to live a life of sacrifice, <laughs> Psalm 50, verse 4 and verse 5. Good. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge. You know what you do in a case to judge is to settle the matter. That place where he said he must judge his people in other versions is that he will settle his people. He will call to the heavens. What is that? Angelic backing. And he will summon the earth. What is that? Destiny help us. So as to settle my people. Now give us verse 5. Give us verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Which kind of saints? Those ones that have made and cut a covenant with me by sacrifice. Those ones who have made covenant with God by sacrifice. God said, I will command heavenly angels. I, Jehovah, I will command destiny helpers to settle you. Not those who gather to offer offerings. But those who are in covenant of sacrifices. I'm asking you again, since you entered 2024, what is speaking in your altar? What have you done that this year should be different from others? I'm asking you. Me, I'm asking you. It's not only fasting. Oh. Fasting... <laughs> If you fast too much without the other one, bro, you know what will happen? Number one, you will have ulcer. Number two, all your body and your trouser will begin to fall down. Because after the fasting, the blessing is not there to put the bad body weight back on. You've got to do sacrifices. Added and the sacrifice should be more than the fasting. It should, it should cut you. It should pain you. It should pain you. It's like I should close your tired. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. May he shine his face and his countenance upon you. May he open all your doors. I believe in fasting. I'm a man of fasting. I believe in prayer by his grace. I'm a man of prayer. 
<laughs> if I tell you how many hours I cover every day, you'll be shocked. If I tell you my fasting life, you'll be shocked. If I tell you the level of financial sacrifice, you'll also be shocked. But let me give you this. If you really want to fly like an eagle, the best mobile altar is the one that you combine everything. Whether money, whether fasting, whether prayer, whether first fruit, everything you can do. That is the life of who? Cornelius. All the apostles are in Jerusalem praying. But the angel came to Cornelius and bypassed them. And said, your fasting and your prayer and your arms. And he's a devout man who fears God. That is holiness coupled with giving, coupled with fasting, coupled with prayer. I mean, he combined everything. Said, it has come before God as a memorial. We, heaven cannot stay back any longer. We have to come to you and hand over to you the next move of God we have left the apostles we have abandoned them you are the next group of people heaven is moving with may you be a mobile altar may your sacrifices be weighty and heavy may your life be a sweet smelling savor may heaven abandon others and connect to you May you draw heaven down to your life. Let me shock you. Let me shock you. I hope this one is sacrifice and not offering. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Do you know in the life of Abraham? Okay. Give me Genesis 15. Give me Genesis 15. Let's run it from verse 1 down. Let me show you things about Abraham. Genesis 15 from verse 1. This thing, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield and I am your exceedingly great reward. Two. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Three. And Abraham said, Behold to me, you have not given me any seed. And lo, one born in my house is now my heir. Go ahead. Four. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, This shall not be your heir. But he that shall come forth out of your own bowels shall be thy heir. Five. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look unto what heaven, look at the stars. If you can number them, so shall your seed be. Six. And he believed in the Lord, it was counting him for his righteousness. Seven. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the earth of the Chaldeans to give you this land. I want you to notice there are two things that God is promising Abraham. Number one is a seed. Number two is a land. Have you got that? Verse 8. And Abraham said, Lord God, how will I know that I shall inherit these things? Verse 9. And he said unto him, take me a heifer. <laughs> Sacrifice of three years of old. A she-goat, three years of old. A ram of three years of old. A turtle dove. What again? A young pigeon, five animals, carry all of them and bring them to me as a sacrifice. You're asking God, how can I enter my prophetic destiny? How can I fulfill the promises you have spoken over my life? How can I enter to be the man Hodan has ordained me to be? And God is telling you, is sacrifice. Is sacrifice. Abraham. I have made you a father of many nations. But if you don't sacrifice, you remain without child. Abraham, I've told you, you will enter the promised land, the whole Canaan. From here, okay, give us, give us verse, I think 18. Give me verse 18, if I'm correct. Let me see. 
Let me see. Is there an 18? Okay. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant. The same day he did what? Sacrifice. The same day Abraham raised an altar, offered sacrifice. God cut covenant with Abraham saying, unto your seed, I have given this land. From the river of Egypt to the great river of Euphrates, God have given assurance of both seed and land because of what? Sacrifice. I know God has spoken to you. I know God has shown you certain things about your life. Let me tell you. You will live this life with nothing to show until the day comes you enter into some serious dimensions of sacrifice. Father, this is what I am bringing to you so that that thing you have spoken might be fulfilled. Not prayer, brother. Not prayer. Not fasting. Sacrifice. And that's the problem you have. You think it's by prayer, 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 prayer. You think it's fasting, 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 fasting. You pray, you fast, you pray and fast. You've been praying and fasting for the past seven, eight, nine, ten years. Every time going to the mountain, I'm going to the mountain, I'm going to the mountain. Brother, please, can you come out from the mountain and bring sacrifice? Let me tell you the truth. There is no man of God, woman of God, child of God that you see excelling. Standing head and shoulder. There's something unique about them. Trace them. There is a dimension of sacrifice they have entered. Trace it. I was with Baba Isa El Buba. One of, if not the leading prophet in Nigeria. When you talk of prophetic voices, that's a man. Last year, we invited him for L Global at uh, University of Calabar. I was preaching. I was preaching on, on this thing, sacrifice and giving. That was my, what they gave me. I talked about sacrifice and giving. And when I finished, I sat down. Is El Buba collected microphone? He said, everything that Reverend Till is talking is my life. He has just preached me. That people only hear my name. They don't know that. 90% of every money that enters my hand, I give it back to God. I live on 10%. But you, you are giving God 10%. And you're telling God, Father, raise me to be number one prophet in Nigeria. Raise me to be number one prophet. Bro, you will never be even the number one prophet in your streets. Your streets, too. I mean your streets. If the highest you're giving is 10% and you're quarreling with God to give 10%, I want to assure you, you are not going anywhere this year. Let all the prophecy come from the altar. Let men of God lay hand, anoint you, even lay heck, leg. It's not 10% that will raise you. It is sacrifice. 10% is not a sacrifice. 10% is your due. You have to give to God. If you don't give it, God will close your doors. You give beyond your 10%. What is 10%? See now, nobody is even saying amen. All my message. All my message. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is it. I started giving God 40% when I was in my 20s. In my 20s. I've gone way beyond that now. I can't be giving God 40%. For what? You are there. You are struggling even 10%. You say, whether it's of God, it's not of God. I heard another man of God the other day. He said, we are not supposed to pay tithe. I believe that report. <laughs> you believe that report? No wonder you are very frustrated. No wonder even your landlord is driving you from the house. You have not paid rent and they are hunting you every day. Even when you come home, you have to sneak into your compound. <laughs> I 
I'm just coming back from the meeting of Papa Madugba. I finished preaching on building anointing. When I finished building, he also picked microphone. He said, this thing that Reverend Tio is talking, that before you're seeing this uh, Gilgal, I don't know if you have gone to that place. When you go there, you will see dormitories. Bigger than this, our prayer palace. He has more than whether five, six of these. And they are bigger than this. Mighty things, you know. And many cubicles, many dormitories everywhere. Hi! He said, and the campground he has is many, many. I think he said, he said whether it's about 100 acres. 500 acres. Yeah. Do you know what is 500 acres? Guys, you move from here until this, uh, this uh, market. You pass market. You reach graveyard. You pass graveyard. You reach junction. That's the land of Madugba. And it's on the highway. He said for him to build, to start building that place, he was fasting and praying, God, I need money, I need money. God said, good. Carry $7,000 and find seven men of God who are in building projects and give them all $1,000 each. $1,000 is $1.2 million now. And you know, he... Who God is talking to? He doesn't even have $1,000. And God is telling you to find $7,000 and sow to seven. He said, I think you want to build. You want, you want your name to be great. You want to become, you want to enter prophetic destiny. Oh yeah, go and carry $7,000. Find seven men of God. Sow. Okay, let's go. These two people are walking out. This one is also walking out. Let's rise. Let's close this thing. Ah, you know, stand up. They're on their own. <laughs> that is what opened Maduba. Sacrifice. My wife was with the wife of Madugba. This one, he didn't share it, but he was just talking to my wife. He said that when they traveled to U.S. last time, they were out of the country for some months and all the Pentecostal handshake was $70,000. That's the whole money they came in to build another dormitory. Do you know what it means when you want God to raise you? Your money is no longer your own. Everything about what God gives you is for the kingdom work. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Sorry. I don't talk about his fasting life. Oh. I don't talk about Maduba, his prayer life. I don't talk about the life of holiness. The, the levels of sacrifice of that man and the wife is so heavy, is colossal, is massive, and is over years. God doesn't just raise somebody. Father, this year is my year. Oh Lord, as I've come to you this year, as I'm sowing this 5,000, I want you to make me a multi-trillionaire. It's a life of constant sacrifice. You live that way. You live that way. Please, I am privileged to meet General Zhu. There's no general you will see that God raised. It is ranking in the spirit realm. That ranking is sacrifice. There's a life they live before heaven place you in certain platform. Ay, 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 ay. I think we invited Oromi Osai here last year. He came. He blessed us. One of the days I went to meet him in the hotel. He said, please don't come. I must cover five hours every day before I step out. And don't allow any of your PA or any of your boys to disturb me. That 
I need to have five hours before I come out from my room that that is my breakfast. Hey! Hey! If I tell you the, 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 the place he built there in Benue State, when you go see that place, brother, and over 50% is from his pocket too. All the money God is blessing him, everything is just going sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. You live that way, brother. If you can't come to that level where your life is a mobile altar of sacrifice, you cannot carry weight in the realm of the spirit. You'll be there answering born again, but there's no vibration. Oh, yeah. This year, you have been upgraded. Amen. This year, no, 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 no. Wherever you were functioning last year, you will double it. Amen. You will triple it. Amen. This is the year you will break all records Amen. in the dimension of consecration and devotion. Amen. Shout that amen like a thunder. Amen. amen. Let me also add this. There are certain men who are more fertile ground than the physical altars you call church. I don't know if I'm making sense. Because there are so many people, they believe so much in church, 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 church. And they believe so much in sowing into projects and sowing into this and sowing into that. Meanwhile, any church that is thriving, it is the man in the altar that is making that place to thrive. And the men of the altar, they are more of an altar than the altar you are seeing. When you see men, the life they live is a life of sacrifice. That is the altar you're supposed to sow into. That one, Germany, pam, it goes straight. Some of you belong to a church. Every Sunday is fundraise. Every Sunday fundraise. Every Sunday fundraise. Every Sunday fundraise. 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 Meanwhile, even the angels in those altars, they are tired. So you can be sowing every Sunday. Every Sunday. Nothing is happening in your life. I'm giving you some wisdom. Can I show you another mystery? Everybody talk about Abraham. How he gave Isaac. That was Genesis 22. But do you know that before he gave Isaac, Genesis 21, God said through Sarah, because Ishmael by that time was 13 years of age. Now imagine, Papa, come. You are Abraham because of your beer beer. And you have reached an age in life, you don't have one single child. And finally, 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 through Hagar comes Ishmael. Young boy, come. Come, yeah, God bless you. Come, come. Climb, God bless you. Hold the hand of your father, Abraham. Look at Ishmael and Abraham. Don't you think that Abraham, to have that one son, even though it was through Hagar, don't you think he's very happy? Don't you think he loved Ishmael? Now, he was playing with Ishmael, son, let's go, let's go fishing, son, let's play football. And they were playing together, father and son. They built a relationship, bonding together for 13 years. And now, Hagar. Sorry, who will I use as Hagar? The blood of Jesus. Ooh, please, somebody help us. Just help us. Somebody come and help us. You, 
How can a man be Hagar? Go sit down there. Daughter, come. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. Only good thing will follow you. Here comes Hagar with her newborn baby. Sorry. No. Mama, you come as Sarah. Come as Sarah. Come with Isaac. That's the newborn Isaac. Sarah with Isaac. And Hagar saw how Ishmael and uh, Isaac were playing together and how there was some kind of misunderstanding there and she vexed, you know. And Sarah vexed when she saw how, you know, Ishmael, huh? Isaac and Ishmael, that relationship, she vexed. And she said to Baba Abraham, send uh, Ishmael away that he cannot be polluting my, my own newborn baby Isaac, that I will not accept it. How do you think Abraham felt? Give me Genesis 21 verse 11. Genesis 21 verse 11. The Bible said, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because, not because of Hagar, for Hagar, she can go. But my son, by that time, he doesn't have Isaac. I mean, Isaac is just a small baby. And for, he said, no, this is my son. I have bonded with him for 13 years. No, I no go agree. Him and uh, Sarah, they quarrel. There was a fight in the house. Sarah said, he must go. Abraham said, he no go go. Sarah said, if he no go read Lisam, me, I no go give you that thing. Abraham said, already I don't pass the age of having that thing. Sarah said, I don't care. Even food, I will not give you food. They quarrel and quarrel and quarrel until verse number 12. Give us verse 12. Look at verse 12. And God had to come down and said to Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy born woman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall your seed be called. What settled the argument was God came down. And when Abraham heard the voice of God telling him to also sacrifice Ishmael. Send him away. Next verse 13. Yeah, also the son of will I make a nation. Next verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning took bread, bottle of water, gave to Hagar, put it on her shoulder and the child and sent them away. I want to believe that Abraham was crying. Because he will never see that child again. And read your Bible. There's no place again that Abraham ever saw Ishmael. He had sacrificed him. After that one, the next chapter, 22, God now came to him and said, carry also now Isaac, your only son, and take him to Mount Moriah and go also and sacrifice this one also. I think if you are Abraham, you would have argued and said, Father, you, 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 the other time you told me to sacrifice Ishmael. I gave Ishmael. I didn't even argue with you. Now you're coming again. Which kind of God are you? I thank you for argue small. But Abraham did not argue. He carried his only son. Number two. The first one have sacrificed. Second one sacrificed. And now he doesn't have another one again. No? And the heaven opened. Now... I know that you love me. In blessing will I bless you. 
In multiplication will I multiply you. Ayala Bushe Kede. Leze Brende Kilibusa. Papa Abraham, thank you. Mama Sarah. Uh -huh. Abraham blessing am I. Hallelujah. Abraham, what thing you give? What thing, what thing you sacrifice that pain you? What is that thing that you have ever given that has ever really pained you? So Abraham was a mobile altar. Everywhere he goes, he raised altar to God. Plus, he has carried Ishmael, sacrifice. Isaac, sacrifice. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I am trying to help you to change your way of Christianity. You. I don't want you to follow all the brother and sister you see in church who are dancing and dancing the dance of 100,000 and giving God the offering of 100 naira and 200 naira. Yeah, yeah, people. I don't want you to follow those people who come every January and they say they are going to the mountain and they are on fasting and they blah, 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 and there's nothing in the altar. I'm still asking you, you your own, what have you brought this year? What is speaking? Oh, you, you, you want to do like other years. You have gone, you, you do 21 days, 30 days, 40. Some of you even go in two months, 20, 60 days. You keep on adding more day of fasting. More day of fasting and no sacrifice. I know nobody will shout hallelujah, I know. Oh my God. It is well with you. You know that this is the year you will see God. Who, this year. This year. I want you to plan for God. Who, plan for him. Don't do the way you are doing all these other years. You know, there was a Sunday. I came to church. I was sitting on the altar. I had two cars that time, two Mercedes Benz. God said I should give both of my car. I don't have motorcycle, only two car. God said, drop the two on the altar. Carry the certificate, documents, drop them as your sacrifice. While others are dancing and giving their offering, drop all the document of your car on the altar. I think I called my wife and I told her. She said, it's okay, go ahead, if it's God. She didn't ask me, I said, uh, my husband, when you drop the car, who will drop the children in school tomorrow morning? She didn't ask. She just says, okay, if it's the Lord. We dropped two cars with keys, with document, and left church on public transport. In 48 hours, God blessed us with two jeep. But your own, your car, even though they think they may pop, pop, you refuse to give God. You still repair and repair and repair and repair. Pop. I was in church one Sunday. God said, carry that. Your sick. This, this car I'm driving now is Sequoia. Before I had this sequoia, I had another sequoia. I was Sunday service. God said, carry your sequoia. Give as offering. I called my driver. I said, driver, bring all the document of that car. Bring the car key. He brought it. I said to him, drop it in the offering tray. He said to me, ah, reverend, this car is very strong. Oh. The car is very powerful. I said, yes, that's why I want to drop it in the office. It's not when the thing has scattered, I give God. 
drop it in the offering tray. <laughs> he went and dropped it in the offering tray. And when my deacons collected the, the offering and they saw my car key and the uh, document, the secretary and the treasurer came and met me. Say, Reverend, this thing, what is happening? I said, I've given God. They went and they called another four more deacons and met me. I said, Reverend, it's like you were moved by emotion. Then let it not be that when you live here, this, your senses will come back to you and you will regret this thing. That think again, oh. I said, I have thought again. Seeing you say you won't receive, give me the document as I'm going. The first church I pass, I will give it to them. They say, Reverend, give it back to us, give it back to us. <laughs> have you ever given God the thing that caught you? Have you ever entered? Look, I preached this year, sorry to mention, the first outing I had, my handshake was a very wonderful handshake. I was so happy. I only preached two, two days and they gave me 1.1 million. I was so grateful because I have to settle, three of my children are in school, in universities, three. And I have to settle all of them. And here comes 1.1 million. And I'm just thanking God. He said, that's your first fruits. That as you go to so, so, so altar, drop it there. Give it. Add that to that one. You will still add another so many hundred of thousand. Add to this one and put it there on that. Are you still there? See. I don't know how God used to do my own, but even as I was in that program where I dropped that first fruit sacrifice, before I know it, I've received a message on WhatsApp. Reverend, I'm watching you live here in the UK. Please, can you come to London and minister in our ministry from so 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 day to so 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 day? <sighs> Another one came from Italy. Man of God, please can you come to Italy and minister to us here in Italy? So, so, so day to so, so, so day. Another one from South Africa. Please can you come to Cape Town? Do you want to tell me I'm the only pastor who preached in that program? Do you want to tell me that all of those pastors were having connection? No. There's dimensions you operate in. Heaven also walk up with you. But when you want to do as every other person is doing, you remain like every other person who, and you'll be asking God question. Father, it's like you have favorite. Yes, you have favorite. God honor those who honor him. If you don't enter this dimension of becoming a mobile altar, brother, you will finish 2024 and you'll still be asking God, God, where are you? Where, why have you not said to me, brother, this year, he will not pass you. Yeah. Remember last week I preached the other week. He will settle you and he will settle you early. Yeah. Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hands. Begin to tell God, take me into the place of being a mobile altar. I want to live a different life of sacrifice. I want to be a living sacrifice. Oh God. Male, bro, Father, take me. <laughs> Give me the heart. Give me the mind, oh God, to live a life of sacrifice to function as a mobile order. It takes sacrifice. After the order of Abraham, take me to that rain. After the order of the Father of take me to that standard. Sacrificial life. Holy Spirit. Along for me. Take me. Help me, Lord. Makataya. Hedesha. Akata. 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 Akata.
Crush the breast, crush the mind, crush the heart. No, I forgot. We had a sacrifice. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To discipline myself. I overcome greed. I overcome greed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please let me advise you. This is not the time to carry your bag and walk out. Because you have gotten what you wanted and you go. You didn't even drop your offering in the altar. You just got what you want and you carried your bag and you begin to walk out. In fact, this is not even the time to go and urinate. This is the time for you to make your, to cut covenant with God. How you handle this message is how God will handle you this year. It's a determinant factor of your position and status. And let me say this. Because of the grace you are going to put into your altar this year, you will be like Ark of Covenant jamming Dagon. Amen. That everywhere you enter, Dagon will collapse. Yeah. Amen. Whether you go for a burial and they have pan, concoction, and charms, and even put poison in the food, the moment you land, everything has scattered. Yes! Yeah. Because of the mobile altar that you are. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So I want you to pray now. And say, Father, make me Ark of Covenant. That anywhere I enter, just by arrival, you scatter every powers. Please pray that prayer. Consecrate yourself for the year. Make me Lord. You are the Make me Lord. Lord, make me Ark of Covenant. Make me love. You are the maker of mine. You are the maker of destiny. And over my side. Don't be made by do you. Lord. Lord. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Lord, make me. I want to be made by your Lord. You the milk boy. You will make the father of it. Lord, make me. Lord, in this ministration of your servant. Lord, make me. I offer my life in the altar of sacrifice. Lord, yeah, yeah. Lord, 
the the of sacrifice. Oh God, give me a new heart, a new heart to walk with you by sacrifice, a new heart to keep the covenant, not to break it, a new heart. Lord, January is over. Is there anything you have actually given to God since you entered the new year that has really actually cost you and pained you? Or is all what you have been giving as you have been giving? Then please do not expect a different result for this year. God is not a uh, deceived. You have to plan. You have to change your ways. There's a day I took that decision. There was a day I said, I'm not giving God 10%. I will give God 30%. I just jumped from 10% to 30% overnight. 
I took that decision. Then I keep on increasing it, keep on increasing it, keep on increasing it. There must be a day you must also decide, Father, I'm not getting young old. And where I am is like I'm marking time. Nothing is really happening. Oh. Father, let me change my stance. Let me change my operation. Let me go to new dimensions. That year is this year. You are a blessed man. Amen. Every prophecy over your life must fulfill. Amen. You must enter your prophetic destiny. Amen. And it must give way. Uh, rem, let me remind you, this year in Hebrew calendar is 5784, the year of the open door. Amen. May that door that has been closed all your years open this year. Amen. Yes. I'm going to call for covenant seed. I'm not calling for high amount because I didn't preach this message to raise money. I preach this message to change destinies. Yes, sir. I want you to carry this message and change your stance. Amen. So covenant seed, 5,000 naira. Can you come now? Let me pray with you at the altar. 5,000, can you come? 